as I got older, I had to keep it up. I had to keep that appearance up and had to keep the fillers up. So I kept going with the fillers and then it just spiraled out of control. So when I walked in here to see Dr. Nassif, um, I loved the way he put it. He basically said, I need to unmake you over. So when I first looked at her, her face was full. Uh, there was some asymmetry. So after my assessment, I said, you know, the first thing we have to do before I can decide what to do with you or for you was to have Laura dissolve all her fillers. Laura is my nurse practitioner, so the goal would be to set up a consultation with Laura to see exactly what we can do to examine where she has fillers and then remove them all. So in order to reverse hyaluronic acid filler, we have to inject a product called hyaluronidase, which is an enzyme that reverses hyaluronic acid. For Mackenzie, she had had several sessions of filler and was an injected all over the face. So we had to do several rounds of filler reversal for her and try to reverse the filler that was in her under eyes, cheeks, jawline, and nasolabial folds. One challenge with reversing filler, especially in the under eye area, is that this reversal can dissolve all hyaluronic acid, including your body's natural hyaluronic acid. So you can experience thinning of skin and a more creepy skin texture after filler reversal. It is important to dissolve the hyaluronic acid filler before surgery so Dr. Nassif can assess Mackenzie's own anatomy without the filler interfering or changing her look. And it was amazing to watch um, because as Laura dissolved the fillers, it was incredible to look in the mirror and go, wow, I see the difference and I see where the fillers had migrated and had created a lumpiness in my face and in places where they, they shouldn't have been and they shouldn't have been placed because I'd gone to the wrong injector. Already I gotta say, even just having my my fillers dissolved has, has helped the confidence because I've seen in, in the areas where they were injected in the wrong areas and in the wrong places, seeing them dissolved has already given me a little bit of confidence back because I'm seeing some of my natural self come back. And that's already given me a little bit of boost. So now for Dr. Nassif to take it from there and to do his magic, I'm, I'm really excited to see what's to come in, in the next following weeks to months of, of healing. And um, you know, nervous of course, but um, it, it definitely is, it's, you know, it's been, ah, it's, it's been a, a rough several years, if not maybe decades of you know, my confidence going down the tube and then, you know, it's that vicious cycle of, you know, trying to fill that void with the, the fillers and, and, you know, trying to, trying to find that and just unfortunately going to the wrong people and people that should be telling you, no, don't do this. And they don't, they say, yeah, sure. Because <laughs> that's what some people do. And, you know, it's, I just fell down a bad rabbit hole. And so I feel very grateful to have found Dr. Nassif um, through my cousin and through friends. And um, I'm so grateful to be here. And it's just, just the whole experience is already boosting my confidence. <laughs> I love the office. I even text Dr. Nassif. I was like, your office is the best ever. I wish more offices could be this incredible. The whole staff, everybody, the nurses, the front office, everybody's incredible. I mean, I literally, I sent him a text message saying, I wish more offices could be this easy to deal with, this kind, this loving. You know, this is no joke of a surgery too. This can be really scary. It is scary, it's surgery. Nobody likes going into surgery. Um, but put surgery aside, everybody's just amazing. What a transformation of Mackenzie following the removal of all the fillers. And Laura used um, Hylonex, which is what we call a hyaluronidase, which breaks up hyaluronic acid, which is what the filler's made out of. And she looked fantastic. She looked great. And she was happy. However, with that, though, you're right. You do have a little bit of the facial aging. And I was able to look at some of the loose skin on her neck and her jawline. And also, after evaluating her eyes, um, I first thought she needed an upper eyelid lift and a facelift. However, after the fillers were dissolved, she did not need to have her upper eyes done. She basically needed what we call a endoscopic brow lift, where I make small incisions in the hairline, use an endoscope, and elevate the eyebrows, especially over here in the lateral aspects, furthest away from the center. In addition, 
she needed a facelift. She did not need, which was so great, we did not need to have to do what we call a platysmoplasty, where you make an incision here and tighten the muscles. Because of the way her neck anatomy was, I was able, in my thoughts of the surgical plan, is to lift her neck from the side, and then lift this here, the jawline, and the middle part of the face up in a deep plane facelift. So my final plan was a deep plane facelift and an endoscopic brow lift. That's what I thought that McKenzie could use to help with rejuvenation, make her look more refreshed, but again, not change her looks. Dr. Nassif, I love and adore you. I can't thank you enough. I'm just so excited for this whole process. I, I'm, I feel so grateful and so blessed um, for Matt, obviously, for introducing us and for bringing me in here and for how gracious and wonderful you've been through this whole process and this whole time. And I, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, I cannot thank you enough. And I gotta say, you know, really, that's the only reason why I'm probably not in tears right now, like nervous for surgery is because I know it's you. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you've done, for everything that you are doing. I just, I, I can't say thank you enough. <laughs>